episode of The Star Sit Down. Today, we have the sports editor at the University Star, Mr. Aiden B. Not Bay, it's B. So, B. hello, Aiden. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I can tell. You look uh, <laughs> you look jovial. How are you doing, bro? Doing good. Doing good. You know, semester's winding down. Looking forward to chill for a little bit. You know, we still got basketball going on, so I can't chill too much, but... You know, it'll be a nice little break. Are they going to be playing through, uh, like, the Christmas break? Yeah, they – um. so they're playing right now. They uh, they get a little bit of a break, like, around Christmas time. And then um, conference play starts January 1st for both men's oh, and women. So. Um, you know clearly better than I do. I mean, I only know from, like, you know – national colleges like you know big 10 and all these other schools and like the nba nfl like how's COVID been like with our team well i mean it's affected like every college team i feel like um you know they're kind of like hush hush about it they don't give you too many details like there's been so many players where they'll be out for a week and they're like it's COVID protocol they don't say if they have it and pro COVID protocol all that means is they were either they either have it or they were exposed to someone who has it so there's oh, so. people say so you guys don't really know. You just yeah. They don't like come out and say like this player has COVID. I think it's like a, a privacy thing, you know. Um, especially oh, okay. injuries, a lot of times they won't tell you what's exactly going on. They'll say it's like an ankle injury or something like that. So you know, uh, it's affected every team. Like every coach I've talked to, like they mention it. You know, um, no one's been immune to it. I mean, obviously no one's immune. <laughs> but yeah. uh, so you know, it's been interesting to like follow, especially you know like. When I came into the sports editor position, like, I didn't know how this was going to go down. I didn't even know if we were going to have, like, seasons. I was like, what's going to happen if, like, there is none? Like, what's my job going to be? Uh, but luckily we did. And, you know, things have gone pretty well. Like, no one – there was no, like, major outbreaks. Um, you know, there were some games canceled or rescheduled here and there. But everything – you know, the we finished three full seasons. So, went pretty well, I would say. And you came into this editor position uh, after May, right? So this is like your first term? Yep, yep. This is my first full semester. I guess I did semester, the summer as well, but, you know, the fall semester was like my real, like, introduction to it. Um, and, you know, I feel like I came in at like a crazy time because, you know, COVID, already talked about that. And then we had the Danny Casper allegations. That was like the first big thing I dealt with. And then, you know, now we have uh, Canberra Winters. You know, he, he got killed last week and that was that's tragic you know um I feel like I kind of got into sports because I didn't want to have to deal with all like the serious like stuff but it turns out you have to deal with a lot of serious things in sports because your sports reflects culture and you know it's you know things happen so before you were the editor what were you doing at the star were you just a sports reporter yeah I was a sports reporter um I came in um kind of like October of 2019. So I really haven't been at Star that long, a little over a year now. Um, and, you know, back then I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I just switched to being a digital media major instead of advertising major. And I really didn't even know what I wanted to do with that. Um, so I was like, well, I like the NBA. You know, maybe I could write about sports. So, you know, I joined the staff and I really wanted to write about basketball. Um, so I did a lot of basketball to start off with. Um, some soccer as well. And, you know, I do some other things here and there, but that's really what I focused on. And then, um, you know, Jaden hit me up one day and he was like, I think you should apply to be the sports editor. And here I am. <laughs> I guess he liked, he liked what I brought to the table. So. so in your time as being sports editor, this is something I'm pretty curious about because me personally, right, I don't, I'm not a big football guy, right? Like I like, I like NBA basketball. You know, I was, I, I'm, I, I'm a big fan of basketball. And I love baseball. I'm a Yankees fan until the day I die, right? So those are, like, my two things. You know, obviously, I, I like a bunch of other sports. Like, I like live hockey. I'm not, like, an NHL guy. But going to a live game, you know, it's an experience. It's a lot of fun. Um, I really like surfing and skateboarding. That's something that's, like, it's not, like, mainstream. But I'm, like, super into it. Like, I love the WSL, the World Surf League. So in your time as, like, being the sports editor has, like, having to really like make reporters cover all these different topics and like you, having you like being able to like watch games and stuff. Has that like piqued your interest in other sports other than basketball? Oh, for sure. 
for sure. Because, you know, when I when I came in, I was definitely a special specialist. You know, like basketball is my thing. You know, I kind of like you said, like I have general interest in other sports. Um, and kind of unfortunately, you know, football is king in Texas. And I'm just like you. I'm not a big football guy. I don't like it that much. Um, it's fine. You know, I watch it. You know, and I, I don't like dislike it. But it's not my thing. Um, so, you know, since becoming a sports editor, you know, I not only had to, like, pay attention to what was going on in, like, all the sports, but I was, like, editing all the stories about every sport. So I kind of – I that really made me appreciate a lot of sports, even football more. Um, so volleyball is something I got really into this year. It helps our team. You know, we're really good, three-peat champs, conference champs. Um, and, you know, I got to know the head coach a little bit, got to do um, a cool story with him about his son. Um so yeah, volleyball I got really into. Like it's a it's a fascinating sport. It's just so like different than every other sport. Like it's not it's like you can compare it to like I guess like tennis in a way, but it's really nothing like tennis, you know. It's just the same shape and like you got a net, you know, that's the only like similarities. Um so you know, volleyball, that's something I'm really grateful for for this position. I got to learn a lot about it. Um so it's a really cool sport. And um, you know, it's probably the one we're best at, you know. So that that helps definitely when you're winning. Aren't aren't they? Uh, isn't not they? Isn't Texas State the women's soccer team? Isn't that like one of the best in the nation? So we we were pretty good uh, for like the last couple years, like probably like two years ago and last year we were pretty good. This year we didn't do that well. We finished like you know because the schedules were all weird this year with like COVID. So we only played teams in our division and we were um, either third or fourth in our division this year. Um, and we like in the first round of the conference tournament, we were playing Troy. Um, Troy, they won like, like one or two games all year. We won like, I want to say three. And then we like had four draws and a couple losses. And like in those draws, like we should have won. And like, that was a thing like all, all year, like we should have won so many more games, but like, late game mistakes like would just like cost that's the thing with soccer like you know it's hard to score a goal and if you make a mistake and they score a goal it's hard to come back from that and that's exactly what happened in the first round of the conference tournament um went into overtime um and in college soccer how they do it is like it's a golden goal so like first to score in overtime you win the game um so first period of overtime it was like the period was almost over they got like this like amazing like almost full like length of the field pass, got past the defense, but in the goal in the game, the season was over. But we weren't that good this year, but um, we had Kaylee Davis, who she was a stud for like years. Um, she's playing over in Europe now. Um, she plays in, I believe, Serbia. She actually just started in a Champions League game, which is pretty cool. We're going to try to, I want to try to do a story with her about that. And like Nigel Pearson, all these guys who graduated last year. But yeah, so soccer, we have been pretty good, but not so much this year. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that was the thing. Like, I remember when I came to Texas State, um, one of my friends, uh, we played, we had played soccer together because I played soccer a little bit in high school and I played in uh, middle school. And one of my friends, he was way better than me. And he like made the varsity team like uh, super early in high school. And like, I asked him, I like about coming to Texas State. And he was like, nah, you know, there's, there's no soccer program. I know the women's soccer program is really good, but I don't, they don't have a men's. Why is that? Do you know? So it's a, it's a Title IX thing. So, um, you know, Title IX, it's basically like gender equality. You know, that's what it's – and it, it has a lot of, like, implications beyond that, like, you wouldn't necessarily realize. So one of those implications is um, – so there has to be equal funding for men's and women's sports. So that's why, like, we have a women's volleyball team, not a men's uh, – men's volleyball team. We have a women's soccer team, not a men's. It's because football is so expensive that that sucks up a lot of the men's funding. So we have less men's sports for that reason. And at, at Tech State, so there's just – what is there? There's football, there's basketball, and so – For men's, yeah, we got football, basketball, um, track and cross country, which is kind of like the same thing almost. Yeah. Um, we got baseball. Oh, yeah, baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah baseball. Um, what else we got? I'm sure we got others, but I'm forgetting. Tennis. Oh, no, we don't have a men's tennis, tennis team, but we have a women's tennis team. Oh, so that's what the court is for? I I, th I didn't know. I don't know nothing about tennis at, at Texas State. We, I know we have a tennis court. I'm pretty sure at one point we did have a men's team, but it got cut. Uh, but I'm I don't know much about that. That was before my time here, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. So okay. So and then for women, so there's women's tennis. There's women's 
soccer. There's women's basketball, right? Yeah, basketball, volleyball, volleyball. softball, and then track cross country. Okay, so there there isn't like that big of a gap. The women have no, like what, like, like two more two more different teams? Yeah, yeah, it's like two, I think. Yeah, like, I didn't I didn't know any of that. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah, you know, people a lot of people don't realize the Title IX thing, you know, because like they think it's like so gender equality. There should be like the same like sports for each, but it's it's it doesn't. It's funding. That's what like is differential. Um, and you know, like I, I've taken some like sports media classes, and we talk a lot about Title Nine because I mean that's like huge in college in general. You know, you hear about Title Nine all the time. Um, and I didn't even realize that like it extended into sports until like I took those classes. Um, man, you know, it does a lot of good. You know, like on the surface, like some people might be like that. That's not fair. Like they should have you know whatever. But it's it it actually is fair in the end. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty fair. I mean, especially like the funding aspect of it more than anything, because it's like it's literally like guaranteed equality, or at least in theory, you know, yeah. obviously <laughs> theory, some shady, yeah. shady stuff happens. But in theory, you know, I feel like it's a good thing. Um, I think the problem is people, when they hear equality, they think when things are equal, that means that they're going to get less because they had used to have more before. But I think in general, well, yeah, in general, equality is a good thing. So uh, I, I, I really like that. I really like that. So going forward, you know, after your time at the start, cause are you a senior or you're a junior? So I'm a senior. Yeah, I'll be – I should be graduating next semester. I'm pretty sure I am, but my, my advisors got me all confused. But I'm pretty sure I'm graduating next semester. Okay, so after you graduate, I know – well, we, we kind of talked about this beforehand and, you know, we've talked about this, you know, uh, even before, you know, the podcast, like you're doing like stuff with sushi and you weren't like sure if you wanted to like work at a publication. So I just want to know like more about your future endeavors and goals. Yeah, I've gone, I've gone back and forth on that. Um, I think I'm pretty settled in, like I want to write now. Um, but what, kind of what I realized was, um, you know, I love sports. I love journalism, but I, like I like them together, but it's just, it's a lot of things that I'm not that good with. Um, you know, it's like one of those things where I never get the clock out, you know, it's all, it's constant. Um, which, you know, I, it's, it's good. Cause it's like made me a, like a good worker. But um, so I, yeah, my goal as of now is I want to like, I want to work in journalism, but I want to get out of sports. Um, I, if, if I got a job in sports, like I would take it like, like that, you know, I just take whatever I can get. Um, but that's my goal is to get out of that. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about like, I want to, I, I want to tell stories, like people's stories. That's what I'm most interested in. And that's one thing I am grateful for from the, the star is like, you know, I've got to like tell the stories of a lot of cool people. You know, I got to talk to um, Dr. Johnny Brown, the first black athlete at Texas State. Um, I got to do that story I was talking about with um, Sean Hewitt, the volleyball coach. Um, I've talked to all kinds of cool people and got to like tell their stories in like whatever, whatever way I can. And I learned that that's what, like, I want to do is, like, tell people stories. And, like, you know, that doesn't have to be, like, some, like, crazy, like, you know, great thing they do. Like, they're just ordinary people that do great things every day. And, you know, if I can have the privilege to tell that story, like, that's that's what I want to do. Um, and the sushi thing, that's that's actually a funny story. Um, so, like, this was – when was this? This was around the time I got hired as at, as sports editor. I can't remember which came first, but like I was like broke, you know, lost my job because of COVID, and then stuff started reopening again. So I got a job at a sushi restaurant. Love sushi, so that was awesome. Um, and I got in tight with the owner, um, Bao. Shout out Bao. I love that guy. Um, and he like he asked me one day. He was like, "Do you want to help out on the sushi line?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." Um, and I worked in like restaurants as I was a cook for like years at like a burger joint, um, and I was really good at it. Didn't like it. Because, you know, burgers aren't that cool. But sushi is really cool. Um, and it, it's the same. It stimulates, like, the same part of my mind. Like, I'm good at it. And it's, like, it's cool. And it's, like, it's like it feels like this, like, art that, like, you know, not everyone knows about, like, and can do. Um, I'm still not that good at it. Like, I like I do it every now and then. But I'm mainly doing the server stuff these days. Um, but that's kind of like my backup plan. It's, like, I, if, you know, I can't make the journalism stuff work, I want to, like, go go to sushi school and try to do that. Okay. Yeah, I, I I wasn't sure. I mean, I remember, like you said, you, you had talked about it and you talked about it at your job previously. And, you know, like I told you before, I didn't know you that well. So that's why, you know, I'm happy we're having this opportunity to talk. And yeah, that's uh that's dope. You know, I uh, I love sushi. I, I'm a big sushi guy. 
uh, personally. So yeah, I think that's cool. How do you like, how'd you get into like something like that? Obviously, you know, you had the owner, but like, is there like, so tell me a bit more about it. We had a, we had a sushi chef quit and then he was like going to the dishwashers and the hosts and he was like, do you want to, they call it a sushi helper. You know, there's sushi chefs and there's sushi helpers. Um, so he was like, do you want to be the sushi helper? And he was asking all these people and they didn't want to do it. And I was like, I'll do it. Looks cool. And so he let me do it. And I was pretty good at it. You know, um, sushi, it's one of these weird things, you know, like when people think of sushi, they think of the rolls and that's, that's like the easiest part is like rolling and like cutting it. Um, sushi is all about preparation. So it's, you know, the actual like making of like the dish to get served. It's pretty easy because it's all prepared beforehand. You know, you just like get some rice, slap some fish on it. Boom. Um, it's done. It's all about like the, cause you know, we get in the mornings, we get in these like huge fish or like a half a fish and they like spend like all morning, like cutting this fish down. It's like these tiny, like different sized pieces. And that's most of the work right there. Um, and that's, that's the part I can't do that much. They let me like shell the shrimp and like make the wasabi stuff like that. But most of my job was like making rice, um, and then rolling like the rolls. Um, and it, cause that's the easiest part. And then, but that, that's how they all start. You know, they start off the, you know, they make the rice. They, the, the rice is like, they say that's like the, that's like the, the like core of sushi. It's like, if you can get the like rice, right, you can get the rest of it. Right. And rice is, I don't know if you ever tried to make rice like at home. It's hard. It's really hard. Um, we have like these big like rice makers there though it makes it a lot easier but it's still like it's you got to get all the proportions right like it's very like intricate really I, I had no clue I I mean I uh my family's like very close friends with a Vietnamese family I've known them for a very long time throughout my uh, like ever since I moved to Texas and they always like every meal they bring rice right and they have like this big ass rice maker so I always assumed I didn't think it was that hard honestly I thought you uh, to be blunt, I, I thought you just put some water in there and turn well, the machine on. And well, with the rice maker, it's really easy. If you're like trying to do it in like a pot, it's pretty hard. Like you got to get like portion dry. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I just can't do it. But in a in a rice maker, I can do it because it does like all the work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's. I need. I want to get one of those for the crib. You know, because I got. I made. I got like a sushi kit and stuff for my house, and like I've tried doing it, but it's just not that. It's hard. Like when I like at the restaurant, like, I can do it a lot easier. But you know, doing it at home is not the same at all. Well, do you like uh poke? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I love it. It's like sushi in a bowl. Like, yeah, awesome. yeah, I I love that. That's like probably my favorite dish. Um, back at at home, uh, I have a we have this spot called um, Poke House. There's one in Austin as well, but uh, I, I'm originally from uh, Round Rock. That's where I live. Oh. That's where I went to high school and stuff. So yeah, uh, it was called Poke House, and like. I don't know. It's so delicious. And like the people that make it, like, it's not like cultural, like appropriation or anything either. Like, it, like they, they were like genuinely like taught and trained and it's, it's so delicious, especially like mochi ice cream. Oh, that stuff's good. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, 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 I don't know. I, whenever I think of sushi, that's like what comes to mind. Cause I would rather, I would rather eat poke. Cause like with some like show you mm. with some uh, ahi tuna, uh, it's, it's, it's what's, delicious. What's your favorite fish? uh salmon salmon ah see i'm more of a tuna guy like i love you know like uh you get like a like for my birthday me and my girlfriend we went to this like nice like sushi restaurant in austin i got like tuna sashimi and it was incredible like i loved yeah. Yeah, I, tuna tuna is pretty elite right i i love tuna too but like i don't know salmon it's just it's such a versatile fish first off salmon they could swim in salt water and they could swim in yeah. fresh water so <laughs> That's pretty, that's pretty insane on its own. But then like, you know, you can grill it, you can eat it raw. It's, 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 it's on, I'm hungry, but you know, this is making me hungry. <laughs> when it comes to cooked fish, I prefer salmon. But when it comes to like sushi, I prefer tuna. See, yeah. Okay. I could definitely, I could definitely see that. I, I, I would agree with that a hundred percent, but uh, enough, enough of this fish talk <laughs> back to you. So you said you're comfortable you said that now, you know, the sushi plan is more of a backup plan. God forbid journalism doesn't work out. So let's say like, you know, you graduate and you get out there in the field. Would you, are you more geared towards um, written journalism or more of like broadcast? Uh, I'm a writer, you know, I, I, I've never like dipped my toe into broadcast at all. So I really don't know what, how that would go. Um, but I've always been like really comfortable, like, you know, expressing thoughts through like writing um even in high school like 
I was like, I knew that's what I was good at, you know, was writing. And I, was, I didn't know what I wanted to do with that. And my aunt, she's in advertising, made a lot of money. So I was like, all right, you know, maybe I could go into advertising. But then I just learned that that's not what I wanted to do. And that's when I got into journalism and joined Star and all that. So I, more into the writing than broadcast. I would try it. Like, I mean, I'm not against it. But. So what made you do the digital media uh, major as opposed to something like journalism or some more writing intensive? Well, looking back, I probably should have done journalism, but at the time, like I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and, you know, I thought, you know, doing the digital media innovation major would it would be, make me more versatile, like as like an applicant when I was trying to get jobs. Cause I could be like, cause I, at that point, like, so I joined the star and I was like, okay, so if I'm applying somewhere, I'd be like, okay. So I have the, the writing journalism ex- experience from the star. And I also have all this other stuff that I learned like through my classes. Um, and yeah, looking back, I wish I'd done journalism, but by the time I realized that I was just like too far along and I didn't want to play my graduation anymore. Um, and I'm not like, I don't regret it really, but like, I think it would have been more like useful for me to go the journalism route. And Molly, uh, our design editor, I've talked to her about like the digital media innovations major. That was something I was considering doing like before I decided like on electronic media, like what's your experience been in that major? Because Molly, the way she just, the, ma- the way she described it, she says, it's like the major doesn't know what it wants to be yet. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So go, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, like that, I mean, that she nailed it. Like it's just, and even like when people ask me what like it is, I'm like, I try to like explain it, but it's, it's really just media for like the dig- digital realm, you know, cause it's like a, it's kind of like a jack of all trades, but a master of none um, type of major, you know, like you do a little bit of video work, you do some social media, you do some writing, you do like some website design, you do like so many little things. And that, that's honestly like I would, one thing I would criticize this major for is like, I don't feel like I'm a master at anything. Um, but like, I have all these like skills that I like have a basic knowledge of which is pretty cool. Like, and I think that's like valuable in a way, but I wish that it was more focused on like one thing. I, uh, I could definitely see that. I mean, I, when I, when I was looking at like the website and like all the like coursework and stuff, it was like, yeah, you do a little website design and on the front p- cover, it's like with the drone. And uh, I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't really, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. I, I didn't, I don't know about any drone classes, but that sounds cool. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I think it's I think it's pretty dope. Um, one of the professors, I don't know his name. Oh, Dale Blazing Game. Uh, yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, he he's I think he's gonna start like a photogrammetry course. Um, I don't know what that is. Pho- photogrammetry. Well, I actually wrote a story about this in my MC thirteen thirteen class. It's like, it's a drone. Well, photogrammetry is like being able to like capture like depth and perceptions or like a picture. So like the drone, drone photogrammetry is like the drone is like capturing video and and photographs and it's like able to like take pictures and like video and like capture depth perception that like, it's some crazy stuff. It's crazy. crazy. (laughs) Yeah, uh, They're going to be offering that as like a course later on. But yeah, I don't know the the DMI sequence just, it seems kind of weird. So I mean, I appreciate your your perspective perspective as well because i mean yeah it's i guess i guess it is pretty weird there yeah and i actually took so you can like choose like a you can do this in lots of majors where you choose like a like a focus so i chose sports media and like through that i've taken like some sports media classes um so you can like choose to focus in like other areas um but like yeah like it's just kind of like a lot of a little bit of everything have your sports media classes uh helped a lot in your work at the star uh, oh, yeah. Uh, well, see, so there, I've only taken two, like, there's really only two classes that, like, you have to take to, like, get this, like, title of, like, having the focus. Um, and one of them used to be sports, it was called, like, sports writing or something like that. And, uh, but to take that class, you have to take sports media. So I took sports media, and I was really looking forward to the sports writing class, but then they canceled that class. They don't offer that class anymore. So, um, it does in a way like it made me look at sports because um dr michael devlin he's the professor i've taken for both of those he does a really good job of like framing sports um in like ways that you don't think about like in a social setting you know regarding like civil rights gender equality things like that and then also like we talk about the business side you know like um internal communication between like you know the gm and the players and like the media 
and all that stuff. So it made me think about sports in a different way than I had before, for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Um, well, kind of like going off of that, how was it covering like the Danny Casper situation? Because I, I, I remember vividly whenever you had like left a meeting that we were in and you went to like listen in to like what was happening with President Trout and like, you know, she was like, he's on like leave with pay. And then later that day, you know, it went out on Twitter and I remember seeing like the, the backlash from everybody and like people sent me tweets and I was like, this is really crazy. Like, the work that people at the start do and like the effect they can have on the community. So I just want to get like your perspective and your insight on that whole thing. You know, that was, that was crazy. You know, um, I remember the, like the day it broke. Um, it was, I think it was my girlfriend's birthday. And like, I just woke up that morning and like my phone was, I had a million notifications. I was like, what is going on? And you know, that Jalen Sheed, he'd put that out on Twitter. Um, and you know, it was weird covering it because like we were really shut out by the university, like the media was. Um, you couldn't get any information from anyone, like players, coaches, um, administration wouldn't talk about it. So for a long time, it was like we were just playing the waiting game. You know, we broke the news, or we didn't break the news, but you know, we like we like wrote our thing saying like what happened, and then for a long time it was just waiting, and we didn't know anything. And then that meeting you're talking about, it was a it was a faculty senate meeting, and um, Daniel Weeks, news editor. He had like messaged me and he was like, Hey, um, they have like, they're going to talk about Danny Casper on like the agenda. So like I hopped in for a little bit and that was like the first time that I'd like heard like anything in so long. And they told us he was on leave without pay and all this stuff. And they actually, they actually ended up giving like a false statement saying that like, um, they had already announced that to the public and all this stuff, but they hadn't. So we like kind of hopped on that. Um, it was just like, it was it was a lot. And then, you know, finally um, he resigned after a while. Um, and, you know, now it's, I feel like the Danny Casper saga is over, um, you know, cause they were, had this like internal investigation going this whole time and we couldn't get any updates on that. Um, it, which that was also a title nine kind of circling back. That was the title nine officer. She was investigating it. Um, and, you know, we did find out that the investigation's over, but like, after he resigns, like, I feel like the results didn't really matter that much. So I feel like that's all pretty much pretty done, but like, that was crazy, you know? Um, and then once basketball season started, like we went to, um, the media was invited to go to practice. We were going to get talked to players and coaches and all that. And going in, I didn't think they were going to let us talk about Casper, but then, you know, a couple of reporters started asking about it and they started answering our questions. And it was really, really interesting to hear from, um, the players and the, the now interim head coach, but he was an assistant coach under Casper. Um, and it sounds like there's really like not bad blood. Like, and this was like the feeling we were getting from former players as well. They were like, he would say some things that were like, you know, racist and insensitive, but that they didn't think he was intentionally trying to be. So he, they were like, a lot of people said like, yeah, it's from a different time and all this stuff. And, you know, I, that, and I, you know, I didn't like, I didn't think that was a valid excuse because I don't, it's not really, but you know, they, they would talk about them like fairly positively. And I don't know if that's because that's their genuine, fe genuine feelings or if they still want to cause any more like scandal around this. But, it, um, you know, like we asked players, like, how do you feel about them? And all of them said, they're like, my opinion hasn't changed of them, you know? And the, the head coach TJ, um, he's a really wise man. I like talking to that guy. He was saying like, he was like, Casper had a direct relationship with each and every one of these, like, these players um and like he's like he's the one that ultimately brought them here so like they they feel some sort of like relationship with him and you know none of them got too much in detail about it but you know that that's the one thing that was missing the whole time was what did the players feel you know because we didn't get to talk to them about it so it, it was nice to get to talk to them in some way about it yeah that's uh that's crazy that's crazy um you know i i I remember when, you know, everything was going on and a bunch of people like outspoken on social media were like, you know, I don't believe it. Cause you know, it's like the players had a problem with it. It's like the media is blowing it all out of proportion. And yeah, it, was just, it was honestly a crazy situation and, and like the timing of it. I mean, it made sense, you know, like yeah. for it to like come out now, you know, after everything, you know, with George Floyd and black lives matter and everything. So yeah, it's it just, it's crazy stuff, you know? Um, so I guess my question to you would be like, 
do you think the players like why do you think why do you think like nobody really like called him out on it like when it was happening like just from your your point of view your perspective that, you know that's a great question i i wish i could answer that um See, I think that it is one of those things where – because if, like, you look at the things that, like, um, Jalen Sheed, like, put in the tweet, none of them are, like, horrible, horrible things. You know, it was just a lot of, like, little little comments that, like, built up over time, and that's why he said he left the team. And then, like, there was a couple other players that, like, we suspect – because they left around the same time. We suspect they probably left because of that. Because, like, Jalen Sheed, he was our starting point guard his junior year. Um, we were the top – seat in the conference and then he transfers before his senior year like, that's weird um and that he said he left because of that so you know it's uh, you know i don't know it's it's probably one of those things where they feel like scared of i think that's what jalen sheet said actually in his tweet he said he was scared of retaliation from the school and also like um his future career like he was afraid that if he like came out with this that it would like affect him negatively in the future but then, like what, like you said, with the George Floyd and all that, he was like, I've realized now that, like, I need to talk about this. So that that's my theory, at least. It was like a, it was a fear thing. Man, that's, that's nuts. And that's, like, the craziest story to happen, like, a tech, in terms of Texas State sports, like, in a w- long time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, that was definitely the craziest thing to happen until, you know, last week when that player was murdered. Um yeah, you know, like, because I can't think of – I mean, there are some, like, littler scandals. Like, apparently the football team wasn't paying their, like, bills. And then, like, the coaches were having to, like, buy the Gatorade and, like, meals for the team, like, on the road, like, from, like, themselves. And there was lots of little things like that. And there was, like, a bus crash in which, like, there was some stuff with that. But, yeah, like, nothing, nothing like accusing a head coach of racism. Like, nothing like that, to my knowledge. When stuff like this happens, do you like reflect and like think about like how important like your your job is like as the sports editor and like writing and like how your voice and like what you do impacts the public? Oh, definitely. You know, because like I said, like um, when I joined the Star, I chose the sports bar mix. I was I was scared to like handle these like bigger issues, but then you know it turns out that you don't escape these bigger issues in sports. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I do have to deal with these because it's, this is important work, you know, like this is way more important than like me, like writing a recap about like our game versus like ULM or whatever, you know, like, that's nice. And like, that's kind of like the basis of sports, but um, it's like my responsibility when like these big things do happen that I got to cover it and I got to like do it ethically and like let the public know what's happening. Um And, you know, that's, that's, and that's honestly like all that stuff is what led me to like want to get out of sports, you know, in the future is because like, I, I, I don't mind doing these like more impactful things. Like I want to do like really meaningful work. Not that I can't do that in sports, but I'll have more opportunities. Yeah, no, I, I I completely understand. Um, So would you like look for kind of like a news role or life in arts or where do you, where do you, where's your heart kind of telling you to go? I think life and arts, you know, I hit up Brie a while back about writing a, a life and arts story. And I still want to do that. Um, I'm going to try to do it like over winter break when I have some more time. Um, you know, cause I just want to like, you know, dip my toes in a couple different things, you know, um, you know, both like from my own experience and also when I like go out to the, like the world, I can be like, look, like I was the sports editor, but I can do this other stuff. Um, I think life and arts. Cause like news, like, so what I don't like about sports is there's all these like little things that like um, pop up that like, okay, like there's games like every week, you know, it's, um, and there's like, you know, player signings and player injuries and whatnot, all this like little stuff. And in news, it's the same thing. You know, it's just not about sports. You know, it's like, oh, the city council, you know, they passed a bill about, you know, littering or whatever, like little things that like need to be reported on, but they're not that interesting. I feel like in life and arts, you know, there's not the breaking news aspect, which, um, it, well, there's less of a breaking news aspect, which I it appeals to me. But also, like I said, like I want to tell pe- stories about people, and I feel like that's the best place to do that is in life and arts. Um, you know, and I thought, you know, because I love like the sushi stuff and like food and like restaurants, I thought maybe I could like try to become like a restaurant reviewer or like that could be like my thing. Like I could write about like restaurants, things like that. Um, I think that would be really cool. And even if I like decide to go the sushi route, like with my career, I would still want to do some sort of writing if I could. Um, I don't want to like abandon it. 
I could definitely see you doing like restaurants and stuff. I think it'd be that, cool. that that would be that would be so dope. And I honestly, I think I think you'd be really fit for it because like not only do you have the experience, but like you're actually you're a good writer. You're genuinely a good writer. So I could see you yeah. doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like you. I mean, in like sports media, I always wonder like if like sports reporters are like happy. Like genuinely, like when I think about like Woj, for example, like that guy, like he's literally everybody, like he tweets something and like, it's just fact, you know, when he has it before everybody else. And like, you know, like you said, you know, it's like constant, like go, 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 go. You know, it's like, what's happening with this team? Like, oh, trade talks for this person. This person signed this deal. Their agent said this. And it's like, man, it, it just seems like a lot. I don't think I could handle it personally, you know? And, you know, I, I've thought about that as well, you know, because I'm like, you know, it's, I'm not like unhappy in my position, but like there are things about it that I don't like. Um, but like I see like in my staff, like some of them, I'm like these people, like these are like the, the woges and whatnot of the world. Like these, they live for sports, like like Damien Bartonick. Um, he just interviewed a, a Spurs player for like his personal podcast um, and like Colton Williams. Like they just live for this stuff. Like they love it. Um, and I'm like, these people, like, they're going to go far in the sports world. Uh, there's some people, you know, that's just like their lives. Like they love all these like little things. I guess that's kind of like the disconnect. Cause you know, I, I enjoy, like, I, I love NBA basketball. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I love about the NBA is like, it's a players driven league. And like, there's so many storylines and like, there's not so many people on teams. So you're able to keep up with storylines and the franchises. And like, I could see myself being, like on a sports talk show, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, you know, all the, all the big ones, but I can see myself doing that, but I can't see myself like out there every day, like, like going to the bubble for three months um, and like, you know, having to quarantine and get tested every day and like be there and reporting on the scene. And like, yeah, Frank Vogel said this and this happened. Like that seems brutal to me. So I guess you really just have to love it in order to like, you know, want it so badly, you know? And, you know, like, the people who, like, love sports and, like, that's their thing, they, they like, don't want to do the life and arts and the new stuff, you know? Like, everyone has their, their things. Yeah, I guess that's I, – I guess I – that's something I've had to, like, think about, you know, like, while being in college. Because that's one thing I love about, like, this position here in, like, podcasting is, like, I talk to passionate people, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, like you, for example, you know, like, this is, this is what I love to do. I love writing, you know? And I just have so much admiration for that because I think – I think that's so dope. Like, like Samantha Hernandez, for example, right? She was on the podcast. She's a drum major. And she was like, I just, I love music education. You know, I want to give kids that, that chance, you know, to that joy of like learning their instrument and like watching them fall in love with it and grow and like being able to help them. And like, that's so awesome to me, you know? So I guess that's just something I have to like consider, especially like when it comes to like sports or like you, like you really like kendamas, I had yeah. to look up what a kendama was before this. <laughs> what the hell is a kendama? How did that start? Oh, man, how did it start? Okay, so um, my old roommate, um, he was he was in some YouTuber. I can't remember who it was, but they, like, had uh, – yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, it was a kendama. <laughs> so my old roommate, he was in some YouTuber, and he played kendama, so he got one. And, you know, we'd be sitting around the house, you know, and I'd play with it every now and then. Um, you know, I wasn't, wasn't big into that. And then fast forward about a year, year and a half, um, I was feeling bored. You know, it was winter break. Um, you know, I stayed in St. Marcus. Like, all my friends left. You know, went home for the holidays and whatever. I was feeling bored. I had some money to blow. So, I, I didn't buy this one. This one's much nicer than my <laughs> original one. Um, so, you know, I just bought one. And then um, – you know, I got pretty into it over winter break, and I kept playing it. And then, uh, so that was that was last December. That was like right around Christmas time. And then, you know, fast forward to like March, quarantine hits, nothing to do. So I was just like playing with these things like all day. Um, and it's like I don't know, it's just like a fun little toy. It like it's because it's like so simple, you know. It's just like a ball, string, some cups. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it, it gets so complex like pretty quickly you know like the easy tricks just like catching the cup like catch it on the spike things like that but then you can like you can start holding it from the ball and like flipping this thing around and like doing all kinds of crazy things um then it's just like it's creative thing and it's also like thing where like i like like mastering like simple tasks 
like I've always been like a fidgeter. Like I always like I spin pins and things like that. Um, and this is like the perfect like like fidget toy. You know, I just turn my brain off for a little bit. You know, if I'm like writing a story, I want to take a break. I go play the condom a little bit, um, get some inspiration, go back to the story or whatever. So you know, it's just like a, it's a nice little like hobby. Do you uh you follow those like people on Instagram who are like sick at kendamas and like do all the tricks yeah actually i went to so there's this like there's this like smoke shop in austin um and the owner he's he's like like he's amazing at this and he hosts these like kendama meetups like i think it's like every sunday and i went to one because for my photojournalism class we do like a feature story so i decided to do it over this guy in like the kendama meetups and like I was like blown away by like what these people were doing. I was like, I never in a million years where I imagined some of the tricks that they can do. Like I haven't, like I can even imagine how many hours they spent. And a couple of those guys went to Texas State, and I was like, wow, <laughs> like it was crazy. Like I I just never seen something like that. It was cool. Yeah, that's a, that's such a niche thing. Like like I the only reason I know about that is because like I think I found about it like a couple years ago. And guy was like doing it like around his leg and like throwing the ball in the air and like using his arms and I was like, Jesus man, it's like such a small hole, you know? Yeah. And these guys are like masters at it. And like you said, like I'm like, how many hours have you put in with this with these two cups, the <laughs> stick and the ball? It's insane. It's insane. But yeah, I I I, I think that type of stuff is a uh, pretty dope. Like like that's like me with like Rubik's cubes. Yeah. Like, I, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the exact same thing. Like, in middle school, um, there was, like, this kid, Zach, and he had a uh, Rubik's Cube, and, like, and he kind of, like, start, he literally started the wave of, like, Rubik's Cubes, and I was like, yo, that's pretty dope. So I yeah. bought one from, like, Walmart, and I learned how to solve I learned how to solve in, like, three days, and, like, I started, like, trying to, like, time myself and stuff, and then, like, okay, I outranked him. I surpassed oh. him. <laughs> I, I was the guy in eighth grade. So, um I like bought a bunch of them and like, like you said, it's like just some fun thing. Like I could be talking and just like doing it on the table. Yeah. yeah it's, um, it's dope. I, I like small stuff like that, you know, like when the, uh, fidget spinners were popular, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah this is like, cause that's what I originally thought. Like, cause my roommate, like he didn't like really continue his condom. He never got that. I'm way better than he ever was. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's, you know, it's, it's just like a fun like thing to like do like you just turn your brain off it's not like that like consuming you know it's just like fun no i i i completely um i agree i agree um another thing i wanted to ask you was like going back to like sports because like i said like you know pretty much more than like a lot of people especially me so has like texas state have anybody like this went to like some major league that's like really popped off that's prevalent like it, it recently at least because i know about um What's his face? He was track. Um, oh, uh, Charles Austin. Yeah. Yeah, Charles Austin. I know about him, but like anybody else. So yeah, we had. Um, I guess like this wasn't that recent, but we had some guy. His name is like something Boster. He graduated from Southwest Texas State at the time, and he played for the Pacers for like eleven years. Um, oh wow! Back in like the early two thousands, and then so recently, we had Nigel Pearson. He graduated. Um, stud he's over in France he's starting on a team over there um, I don't really don't know how good that team is but like I feel like he can make it to the league like the NBA at some point down the road you know I don't know if he'll be like a star or whatever at any point but I feel like he can make it um, I thought he was my theory when he graduated I thought he was going to try to go to G League um, yeah, they in France and they, I think they pay a little better over there than the G League um, so him and then we got um so Aaron Brewer graduated, I believe, last year. He plays for the Titans currently. He actually just got his first start like two weeks ago, and he did really well. He got like a lot of like social media buzz. Um, yeah, that name had, sounds uh, familiar. That name yeah. Sounds familiar. And we had uh, Brian London. He also graduated last year. He was he signed with the Rams like over the summer, and then I think he got cut though. Uh, damn. So that sucks. And then, so Kaylee Davis, we were talking about soccer earlier, also graduated last. Something about the 2020 class, Texas State of athletes. They were really good. Um, so, she, yeah, she signed with that Serbian team. And they're uh, – so soccer, like, I don't know if you know much about soccer. But, like, it's really weird. See, you know, they have, like, the like the leagues, like, in the country. But then yeah. they also play, like, um, in these, like, continental leagues. Like, yeah. so, 
American ones and there's like European ones. Um, so there's the Champions League. That's like the top level of like European soccer. Um, and her team plays in the Champions League and she started in Champions League games. So like we, I mean, these aren't like, these aren't like major, major like teams or anything, but like these are like still like professional athletes. Like, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you're getting paid to play a sport. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty know? sweet. And even like, you can talk all the trash you want, but I bet you like Nigel, I, I don't know him, but like he goes to LA fitness. He's killing everybody in the I'm gym. Sure. <laughs> yeah. He's killing everybody at the gym. Um, what was her name? Uh, who Kate was it? Yeah. Kaylee Davis. She goes up to the field. Like she's dominating, you know, like, yeah. So I, I respect it, you know, at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, I was just curious because I've always wondered, because like Texas State is, we're a D1 school, but I don't like, we like, kind of like, we're close to D2, but like. Nah, we're, so we're, we're considered like a mid-major. So like, um, so we're like the mid-level of like D1 schools, I believe is what that means. Um, you know, because then there's the big ones, like the Big Ten, you know, SEC, th- those are like the top flight, you know, and then we're like a step below that. And okay. to my knowledge, I'm not like that, like knowledgeable in like how the whole like college, like sports, like NCAA is organized. I don't know much about that. Probably should, but um, you know, it's, it's not something I know that much about, but yeah, we're not like on the lowest level of D1, but we're like a little bit up there. Cause like some of our, like, so our football team, you know, we're not, we're not all that good, but like you know, our volleyball team, like we dominate like year in and year out. Um, so you could say that like our volleyball team, has like outgrown the Sunbelt Conference, but like our football team really hasn't at all. So we're in this weird spot. Is that how, um, is that how like schools are like kind of ranked? Is it just by like the school as a whole and like all their teams or is it like, because you just said the volleyball team kind of like outgrew the Sunbelt Conference, but they're still playing like in the conference. Yeah. So like a school, like you can't have half your like sports in one conference and half in the other. Yeah. Um, so and, you know, it's, it's just a matter of, like, pulling up, like, the rest of the sports, like football. You know, maybe we can move into a bigger conference one day. Um, and I, we only joined the Sun Belt in not that long ago, like, probably 10 years around there somewhere. So, we haven't been in the Sun Belt for that long. I think the Sun Belt is a fairly new conference, if I'm not mistaken, where it's gone under, like, a lot of, like, reorganization in, like, the last, like, decade. So, and that's got, like, Tennessee, like, Arkansas, like, different schools like that, right, in it? So the Sun Belt, we don't got Tennessee, but we got um, let's see. So we got Coastal Carolina. Um, they're probably like, I mean, they're dominating football right now. Um, whooped up, whooped us last week. That was hard to watch. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got Coastal Carolina. We got Arkansas State. State. We got uh, Little Rock. We got ULM. We got all these like schools that were like you've probably heard of them in some way, but they're not like huge schools. You know, kind of like Tech State. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. You know, people have heard of it, but they don't think of it as, like, you know, like a prestigious institution by any means. Oh, yeah, 100%. I I know exactly what you mean. I mean, it's like, it's like, well, Florida State's a little different because, I mean, Florida, doesn't Florida State have, like, really good sports? I guess. I don't know. Um, I mean, that's fine if you die. I'm just thinking, like, more of, like, other schools because there's, like, like Florida University, Miami University, and then there's like hey, Florida State, you know? Yeah, kind of like I think state schools are usually kind of like in that. They're like the party schools, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, I know. We we go to one, so I mean, I've, <laughs> I've heard. But um, no, yeah. I was just I was just curious because I mean, like like you said, like you hear about like I don't know how to phrase this. Like you hear about like Texas State and like sports and like the schools that we're playing and like technically we're D one. But we're not like A and M or UT or you know Tech or any of these other schools. So yeah, that's uh, that's just what I was thinking. Sorry about that. I was, You're good. It's been, a, it's been a long day. I think about that as well, you know, because um, like I feel like I I've come to realize there's a lot more D1 schools than you would think. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, a lot more. Like I don't, I'm not, I have no idea like what the number is, but um, you know, I I I feel like there's probably a lot less like D2 and D3 schools than there are. D1 these days. I see. I thought it was the opposite. I thought like D1 was like creme de la creme, you know, and like there were a lot more D2, D3 schools. And like, cause I don't know, cause it like in like high school football, you know, that's where a lot of like guys mm-hmm. get picked up is like it's a D2 school, it's a D3 school. And you're like, yeah, that's oh, true. That's good. You know, like even if you don't make it to the league, you know, you're getting a 
pretty much free education. That's how I feel about it. I'm like, that's pretty sweet. I still think, you know, like there's that whole thing where like college athletes don't get paid because, you know, you're getting all this from the university. And, you know, I don't think all college athletes should be paid by any means. But some college athletes should definitely be paid because they bring so much to the university. A hundred percent. Yeah, I literally like, like we're talking about NCAA. Those guys, at least basketball, you know, I don't, and football too, if we're we're being quite frank, because these guys are going out there. Because, like, fo- people love college football because it's so much, like, more harder and these guys are trying to make it to the league. These guys need to get a cut, you know, because these universities are making so much money off their talent. And realistically, if I'm a football player, I'm a, I'm a defensive back for A&M or I'm a, I'm a, I'm a quarterback. No, maybe not quarterback, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm playing a prominent position for a big school that makes so much money from their football program, and they're being on, like, ESPN Saturday night. Like, I think I should get a cut, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's one of those things, like, I, to my knowledge, like, most um, college athletic programs don't make money. Like, I, I would be shocked if Texas State Athletics made money. I think they'd probably lose money off of it. Um, really? So, and, and, you know, in that case, it's, like, hard to justify paying them. But, like, at some schools, like, you know, the UTs, the, like, the Dukes or whatever, you know, these, like, these schools that are, like, you know, year in, year out, like, bringing in tons of money for the school, you know, being really successful, expand, expanding, like, the school's brand. You know, I think they should get a pay, uh, like, a cut. But then it's one of those things where it's, like, not every player on that team is, like, causing that so it's like do you draw a line somewhere like you have to be like this popular or this good to get paid and, you know that gets problematic so it, it's yeah you know i think they should be paid but like i'm not sure what that looks like in reality you know i don't know how they decide that no i got you i mean that, that makes sense i'm i'm thinking more of like like the big schools like kentucky duke mm-hmm. um uconn like all these programs are like like known for their sports, like Texas State football isn't, or Texas State isn't like known for football, you know, like it's known for yeah. other stuff, you know, like big schools like that, like, like Auburn, Al- Alabama, all, like th- those types of schools, like, cause I don't even watch these programs, but I know them because their sports programs are that big. You know, I feel like, cause even if you get like recruited or you're like on the practice squad, see football, I think football is a bit different because there's so many players. Yeah. There's so many players and you got the practice team and, it's special it's it's a whole different animal but i mean like basketball you know you got 15 guys even if you're not getting like that much time in the rotation and on the court you should at least get somewhat of a cut you know and you know there's there's here's what i think is probably the best option i think california already like legalized this where college athletes are allowed to make money off their likeness like yeah that that's awesome you know because then they can like they can like you know, a pizza shop, you know, in their town can like pay them and be like, Hey, can I put you on like a billboard and like say like, I love pizza or whatever, you know, they should be able to get paid off that. Like, I don't understand why they can't do that. And I think the NCAA, they're like, we're an amateur league. Like these are not professional athletes. These are amateurs. And if they start making money off their athletic career, then they're no longer amateurs, you know? And so, but like, it's, I don't, I don't like that whole like thing. I think they should be able to make money off like who they are. Like the school doesn't own them as a person like yeah no I, it, I agree that solves the problem of like you know you can't pay every player but you know these players deserve money so if they're like famous enough they should be able to make money yeah no, yeah i think i think that'd be a great solution and i mean a lot of these guys especially like young guys like if if you're in the if you're about to be drafted and you're on the national stage like adidas hits you up like and you know you you know where you come from and how it can affect your family like there's no way you're gonna just not take that money and be like sorry you know I mean, the NCAA, it's like, no, like, this is life-changing stuff. Like, why would you, you know, I, I don't know. I, that's that's kind of like my gripe with the NCAA, at least in terms of basketball. I think that solution you said of likeness kind of solves the problems that I said. Because I can imagine, like, for example, imagine, like, Gumby's Pizza San Marcos is like, hey, uh, number 22 on the phone. I don't know these guys. Number 22, can you, like, make a – can you – be on our advertising and like, yeah. say you like our pizza. It's like, well, hell yeah. Why wouldn't I, you know? Why not? And like, and they're not going to make that much money. Like, I, cause that, and that's another thing. They're like, we don't want to take money away from the school, but like the athletes are pretty much the ones bringing in the money to the school. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to have a Texas state logo on there. It just be the person. Like, yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. I, I, I agree. I agree. Um, we are just about out of time, my friend. Um, 
So I really appreciate uh, having you on the podcast and like getting to know you better. I, I enjoyed our conversation. Yes, um, yeah. If uh, I normally, you know, save this time for like people say, you know, if there's anything they want to shout out or mention or, you know, personal or what have you, you know, this is your time. Take the floor. Let's see. Uh, I guess, you know, shout out to University Star. Go read us. Um, shout out Sports Department. Um, my boy Damien, he has a, a podcast. It's called like the Damien Ant Podcast. He's interviewed a Spurs player. So go check that out. Um, and other than that, you know, just uh, support student media, I guess. Hell yeah. I mean, if you're here, I mean, <laughs> thank you for staying that long. God knows uh, we need more viewers. So thank you so much. But uh, anyway, thank you again, Aiden. I really appreciate your time. Um, well, you probably def- you'll definitely be on uh, before you graduate. You know, uh, see how you've changed during that time. That's another thing I love about these. You know, people can look back and like see where their heads were at, and it's I, I love this. I love this job. So I can't wait, man. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. That's it for the star sit down. You guys have a great day. See you next Friday. Bye.